In a big push towards the Prime Minister's call for Atmanirbhar Bharat, the Defence Ministry has decided to stop the import of 101 defence items beyond a given timeline. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh on Sunday announced that the move will lead to defence contracts worth 4 lakh crore rupees to the domestic industry within the next 6 to 7 years. The list of 101 embargoed items comprises of not just simple parts but also some high-technology weapon systems like artillery guns, assault rifles, transport aircraft, choppers and radars, among others, the ministry added. The embargo on imports is planned to be progressively implemented between 2020 to 2024. Here is the complete list of defence items that the Defence Ministry will stop importing to promote the domestic industry. The list includes high-technology weapon systems like artillery guns, assault rifles, corvettes, sonar systems, transport aircraft, light combat, helicopters, radars and many other items, the centre said in a statement. The list has been prepared by the Defence Ministry after consultations with all stakeholders, including the armed forces, public and private industry, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh said. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh said on Sunday that Prime Minister Narendra Modi will present a new outline for a self-reliant India in his address to the nation from the ramparts of the Red Fort on August 15. The Defence Minister said various departments and ministries of the government are working seriously to implement Modi's initiative for a self-reliant India and that it is an attempt to give a fresh dimension to Mahatma Gandhi's push for Swadeshi stating that the BJP government will not allow any harm to India's self-respect and sovereignty at any cost. The Defence Minister said that the coronavirus pandemic has shown that a country may not be able to effectively protect its sovereignty if it is not self-reliant. Senior Congress leader and former Union Minister P. Chidambaram on Sunday dismissed the Defence Ministry's import embargo announcement as mere high-sounding jargon. Reacting to Rajnath Singh's announcement, Chidambaram tweeted that while the Defence Minister promised a bang, he just delivered a whimper. What it means is we will try to make the same equipment that we import today in two to four years and stop imports thereafter, Chidambaram tweeted. He added that since the Defence Ministry is the only importer of defence equipment of the Defence Ministry itself, all this announcement deserved was an office order from the Ministry to its secretaries. A record single-day spike of over 64,000 new coronavirus cases has pushed India's COVID tally past the 21 lakh mark, the Union Health Ministry data showed on Sunday morning. Of these, over 14.8 lakh patients have recovered so far. This is the third consecutive day that more than 60,000 fresh COVID-19 infections have been recorded. The country also recorded 861 deaths in the last 24 hours, taking the number of fatalities due to the virus to 43,379. Maharashtra, the worst affected state, on Saturday passed 5 lakh cases. The state has close to 1.5 lakh active cases, the highest in the country. Claiming that the recent spike in the number of novel coronavirus cases was due to patients from outside being tested in the facilities in the national capital, Delhi Health Minister Satyendra Jain on Sunday said there is otherwise a decline in cases in the Union Territory. The Health Minister also said hospital admissions have also increased due to the patients coming from outside. In June, Delhi Lieutenant Governor Anil Bejal had overruled the AAP government's decision to reserve hospital beds in city-run and private hospitals only for residents of the national capital afflicted with the coronavirus infection. Saudi Aramco's net income plunged by 50% in the first half of the year, according to figures published on Sunday. The figures offer a glimpse into the impact of the pandemic on one of the world's biggest oil producers. Profits for the first six months of the year plunged to $23.2 billion, half of last year's $46.9 billion for the same time period. The results were announced as Aramco's second quarter earnings dipped to $6.6 billion compared to $24.7 billion during the same time last year, reflecting a staggering 73% drop. The majority state-owned company's financial health is crucial to Saudi Arabia's stability. The Congress must expedite the process of finding a full-term president to arrest the growing public perception that the party is adrift and rudderless, senior Congress leader Shashi Tharoor said on Sunday. Tharoor also said he certainly thinks Rahul Gandhi has the mettle, capability and aptitude 
to once again lead the party. But if he does not wish to do so, then the party must take action to elect a new chief. His comments assume significance as they come just ahead of Sonia Gandhi completing one year as interim chief on August 10th, with the party yet to find her successor. Ahead of the Rajasthan Assembly session, Chief Minister Ashok Gehlot on Sunday appealed to all MLAs to listen to the voice of the people to save democracy and stand with the truth. The Assembly session in the state which has been witnessing political turmoil after the rebellion by Sachin Pilot and legislators loyal to him will start on August 14th. Gehlot is likely to seek a trust vote during the session. In a letter to all MLAs, Gehlot sought their cooperation in fulfilling the promises of development and prosperity of the state. Shiv Sena MP Sanjay Raut has slammed the centre for handing over the Shushan Singh Rajput death case to the CBI. He said that the decision has been taken for political gains and as part of pressure tactics. Terming it as a conspiracy against Maharashtra, Sena mouthpiece Samna editor said that the BJP has politicised the case by linking a state minister with it. Raut in his weekly column has said that the decision of handing over the investigation is an attack on the state's autonomy. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Sunday transferred 17,100 crore rupees to the bank accounts of over 8.5 crore farmers as part of the PM Kisan scheme aimed at providing direct support of 6,000 rupees annually to them. The amount was part of the sixth instalment of the scheme launched in 2018. The government claims to have provided a direct cash benefit of over 75,000 crore rupees to more than 9.9 crore farmers as part of the scheme. The Prime Minister also launched a financing facility of 1 lakh crore rupees under the Agriculture Infrastructure Fund for agri-entrepreneurs, startups, agri-tech players and farmer groups. Chennai Super Kings' pre-IPL camp in March may have ended midway due to COVID-19, but the franchise has managed to get permission from the Tamil Nadu state government to have a camp in the city from August 15th. Few CSK players including skipper MS Dhoni, Suresh Raina, Harbhajan Singh, Ambati Raidu and Piyush Chavla will fly to Chennai via chartered flights on August 14th and will resume practice at the MH Adambram Stadium the next day. Sources close to development told the Times of India that the players will not have to undergo a two-week quarantine period once they are in Chennai. They will be tested two days prior to entering the city and provided they are COVID negative, they will be flown in. The source added that during their stay in the city, the players will be tested twice and will be flown to the UAE on August 21st only if they are found COVID-19 negative. <laughs>